so here I am, a baby picture of me. This was back in 1990 when we, I was the director of the National Center for Supercomputing Applications, and this is the uh, uh, Cray YMP. It was $15 million. Uh, it could do gigaflops, billions of floating point operations per second. Um, and the NSF net backbone, which became later the internet, was megabits. Well, now you go forward 15 years, that same computing power uh, is in a $1,000 or less, by now less, laptop. Same computing power, exactly. In fact, this, the PC probably has more memory than the YMP had. Um, and the megabit to the home is completely normal, right? So this testing things out at the elite frontier of scientific research, and yet them ending up over a decade or so as a mass market happens over and over and over again, which is one reason that we actually fund science in this country. Um, for instance, the NSF is funding the first sustained uh, NSF uh, supercomputer called Peta uh, the Blue Waters at the University of Illinois. It'll be a million times faster than that YMP. And um, it's partly because of parallelism, just like the brain has a very different form of parallelism, but that's why it's as powerful as it is. And what this lets you do is to, um, what computers are much better than humans are, are, are at, is to take the partial differential equations that define the laws of physics and solve them in high resolution of space and time. And so you can see back in 87 when we first took the equations governing the atmosphere with the solar radiation coming in uh, and the equation of state of water going between water vapor and ice and so forth, you could get something that looked like a self-excited thunderstorm. Uh, now, with the much faster supercomputers, you're actually able to zoom down in and to see phenomena like vortical cores forming that actually are tornadoes within a very, very large th thunderstorm, all of which are being simulated. Um, so if you look at the NSF supercomputer centers where they have teraflops, so 10 to the 12 uh, floating point operations per second, they're being used for all kinds of things from uh, better fuel cells to uh, bird flu drugs, Alzheimer's, and so forth. So vast a range of, of scientific applications. Now here I just scanned this out of Ray's book uh, the, yesterday, and this is going back through this period from 1990 on up of the various computers that are in uh, places like uh, the Department of Energy Labs and, and so forth. Um, the two red dots I added are petaflop, that's 10 to the 12, uh, 20 to the 15 uh, floating point operations a second, second, and exaflop, which is a thousand times that, just like a petaflop is a thousand times a teraflop. And so you can see that in this period from uh, 2010, where already we have sustained petaflop until about 220, this next decade is where we're going through the uh, 10 to the 16th, which is right there, which Ray considers a conservative number, I love that, for the um, computing power of the human brain. Now there's, I'm not going to go into all the ways you can figure out what is a likely number for the computing property of the brain because he covers that in his book and he has many uh, references. But I just want you to see that you're going to be living through that period. 